Hey everyone, it's Sandra, and today's video is going to be a uh, little chatty get ready with me video. And because I'm like the pinnacle of makeup innovation, I did a, a red lip and a rusty eye, which is like the quintessential fall makeup look. So if you want to see how I achieve this look and want to uh, hear me chat some more about some makeup and some products that I have never mentioned on my channel before, just keep on watching. I'm actually feeling super inspired to kind of transition my makeup from my summer go-to look into a more fall look. It really feels like the end of summer. Like it feels like the last week of summer where in the morning, it's still a little bit, um, a little bit cool. You need a jacket, but in the, in the afternoon it gets a little bit warmer. my favorite type of weather. It's not too uncomfortably hot. My skin is already starting to be a bit more dehydrated. So I'm gonna use this little guy. This is the Ren Instant Firming Beauty Shot. It's like a hyaluronic acid product that is supposed to kind of brighten up and firm the face and hydrate it really quickly. I actually really like the eye version of this, so I'm um, excited to give this a try. It feels really nice on and my skin feels quite comfortable. For foundation, I am using the Too Faced Peach per Perfect Foundation, which I've actually, I mean, I've, I've gone, gone down to half of it. So I have been using, but I've never talked about it on my channel because it's not something that I particularly love nor hate. Uh, this is a foundation that truly is very good for people with oily skin, but not, not too crazy about the color range. I am the color vanilla. I feel like the undertones of all the shades are um, a bit strange, so I don't love this foundation. I don't hate it either. I am trying to use it up. I am trying my hardest to stop purchasing new makeup and I'm trying just really hard to be more mindful about what I keep in my collection and to actually use up the stuff that I have. So right now I am going to be, I don't think I'll, I'll be talking about new foundation in a while because I really want to use up what I have. So I'm going to do about a pump of this foundation. This is great for people with oily skin, but if you have any visible dry patches, stay away from this. Either obviously prep your skin accordingly or just skip it all together. I think there are a lot of better foundations out there if you are uh, somebody that suffers from more dry skin. But for my combination oily girls out there, this is a good formula. If you can find a good color match in it, it might be worth a try, but I definitely prefer like the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation, YSL All Hours. This does control oil quite well. I'm gonna do another pump. When I make the mistake of applying too much at once with this, it can get really hard to work with. It sets quite quickly. So before I would just do like two pumps of it on my sponge and then I would start blending it and I found that parts of my, make my makeup would set a lot faster and then the extra foundation for my sponge would hit those parts and it would just look really, really patchy. I find that if I set it with powder, it can look really, really cakey. So I prefer not to do powder and I'm gonna do it just a little bit more. I don't have my NARS concealer with me. I do have a couple of little blemishes, little scars, and I don't have like a blemish concealer with me, so I'm just using a little bit more foundation. I'm going to build it up a little bit in those areas. Bear with me, I'm using all natural lighting, no studio lighting, because I find that while I love studio lighting, and it's obviously really handy if I'm filming a video in the evening and especially in the winter time where it gets dark at like 5 p.m. So I would come home from work and it would just be pitch black outside. So I definitely need studio lights in those uh, those situations, but I just find that natural light truly reflects colors of products and true textures a lot more accurately because studio lights can, can be really bright, especially when you use a ring light. I find that whenever I use a, a ring light, colors tend to get a little bit more blown out. So I have to try and do more color correcting work in post-production, but 
So far from what I can see, this is looking pretty, pretty true to life. My forehead is looking a little bit shiny, but I would rather walk around with a shiny forehead than with like super, super cakey makeup. And I used to be so self-conscious of any oiliness in my skin. I would just be constantly powdering and I would just use like powder foundation constantly throughout the day to touch up. And the older I get, the less I care. <laughs> and I'm just more like, you know what, whatever. Um, it's natural, people sweat, people have oily T-zones. Like, let's, let's be less harsh on ourselves. I'm using this new concealer. This is the First Aid Beauty Bendy Avocado Concealer. I feel like they're trying really hard to compete with Glossier because Glossier Stretch Concealer, this is Bendy. They also released a skin tint after Glossier did their skin tint. So I think that First Aid Beauty is trying to cater to the same demographic that purchases a Glossier. I have to say under the eyes, I like this better than the Glossier Stretch Concealer. This blends out beautifully. My only concern is the uh, shade selection. This is shade number two. The shades are really weird. Um, the shade range is not wide enough and the undertones in the shades, I feel like they all lean a bit too peachy and not all of us want peachy underneath the eyes. Um, they're either too peachy or too yellow. In terms of performance under the eyes, as you can see, it's not shiny like the glossy stretch concealer. This definitely works a lot well, a lot better under the eyes. Blends up beautifully and it does crease a little bit, but it's nothing that like it's just a little finger swipe. Can't fix. It's not as much coverage as the Too Faced Born This Way Sculpting Concealer. It's in terms of coverage, it's on par with the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, which is one of my drugstore favorites, but it does blend out a bit nicer and it gives a bit of a smoother finish. So it's if you like the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer under the eyes, you will really like this. This is like slightly better than it. I'm trying a new under eye powder today and I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet. This is the Becca, Becca Under Eye Brightening Setting Powder. I am almost out of my Laura Mercier Brightening Under Eye Powder. So I thought I would try something new because I've been using the Laura Mercier Powder for years. And there's nothing that I don't like about it. So I'm very nervous about trying something new. And yeah, I don't, don't know how I feel about this yet. I definitely, it definitely does not work with a damp beauty blender. I tried to use a damp beauty blender to apply um, the powder to set my concealer and I looked like Dumbledore. <laughs> like I looked like, oh my God, it made me look so, so old and it made the skin look really dry and it kind of like puckered up under my eyes and I had to like remove it and start over. A little brush is definitely a more, a better way of applying it and just uh, using this little Real Techniques brush to lay it down. And with this brush, I don't love it as much as I like my Laura Mercier powder. Also, I can use my Laura Mercier under eye powder to bake with a beauty blender and I never have any issues with it. So I'm wondering what ingredients in this are different. I'm gonna keep playing with it. You know, I, I always like to make a product work. I don't like giving up on it right off the bat, even if I don't love it, because sometimes I end up loving it. Sometimes it ends up just being a, a, a matter of just fixing my application. Like the, um, the By Terry Hyronic powder, if you guys remember, I hated that powder when I first bought it and I was using it wrong. So I had to just figure out a way to use it to make it work for me. And now it's one of my favorite powders. So. Maybe that's gonna happen with this. If you have this under eye powder, let me know your favorite way of applying it. Let me know if there are any tips and tricks that I've missed. I am curious, but yeah. For now, that will do. Since we're going from summer to fall, this baby right here. This is the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. And this was my go-to like last summer. I absolutely love this palette. And this summer, my go-to palette has been the Marc Jacobs Fantasine eyeshadow palette, which is more of like a pink and coral type of palette. 
and yeah I kind of neglected this a little bit and I felt bad so I thought you know what let me try to use this more I'm gonna apply this ounce shade which is there's a lot of construction going on outside so I apologize for any impromptu construction I exist but so I'm using this ounce shade all over the lid on this big Mac 227 brush all right so hopefully you can see me a little bit better now um, hello can you see my uh, under eye dryness thanks to that powder um, I'm using the chaser color now on a fluffy brush and I'm applying it in my crease I'm already noticing see my skin today is too dry for that foundation should have picked a different foundation but we're gonna make it work sometimes we just have average makeup days not every day is an excellent makeup day now I'm taking a smaller uh, blending brush and I'm going in with the soft and low blow colors and I'm just applying them on the lid on the crease all the way around a brush that's also like a blending brush but it's a little bit more tapered at the end and I'm going in with the color cayenne and I'm applying this I'm laying this down in my outer corner and then I'm going to lay it down in my inner corner as well. Then with this brush, I'm going to go back into the low blow shade. And I'm going to do a little bit of connecting, but this is just with a lighter color. Not the cayenne color, which is a bit deeper. So, try and do the same thing. What I'm really not liking is this foundation. Ooh. Use this flat brush. I'm going to take the color Dirty Talk. This color has a lot of fallout. It's not the greatest, but it's really pretty once it's pressed into the eye. So I'm just applying this color all over the eyelid using just pressing motions on my eyelid to kind of just keep the pigment on there. I gave in and bought the, the new Pat McGrath palette. The glitters in that palette were just so mesmerizing to me and it made me feel really excited and really inspired, which is um, something that I haven't felt about an eyeshadow palette in quite a while since so many eyeshadow, I feel like there's a new eyeshadow palette that comes out every single week and most of them just like meh. But that one like really, really, really got me excited. I'm gonna take my finger now and the Lombre shade, which is slightly lighter color. And I'm just applying that only in the center of my lid. This is the only thing I don't like about this palette. Like, I feel like we really are missing like a really shimmery, like a really beautiful metallic gold. That would be so pretty in here. There's a gold eyeshadow in the Born to Run palette that is so stunning. If that gold shade was in here, And then I'm going to dip it into this shade Scorched and take the color just a little bit lower. I'm noticing an edge here that's not blended too well, so I'm going to try and fix it. This is an Estee Lauder eyeliner. It's in the shade Burgundy Suede. The color is stunning. But in terms of formula, these are not as good as the Marc Jacobs eyeliners. Now to me, it looks like this eye is a little more out there. So I'm just using my beauty blender with whatever product was on it from before. And I'm using it to clean up that edge a little bit. This is like summer in a tube for me. It's not really a tube, it's just a 
a palette, but it's a little highlighter, bronzer. It's quite shimmery, and it's from, um, it's another, it's a Chrissy Teigen and Becca collab from this year. And it just gives gorgeous dimension. The bronzer part is matte, so I'm just dipping into the bronzer part right now with this little angled cheek brush. Quite a dark color, so I don't think it's that suitable if you have a more fair skin. For brows, I'm using the Hourglass Arch Brow Pencil. Then for brow gel, I have scoured the internet for extra tubes of this. This is my favorite brow gel, and it's now discontinued, unfortunately, so I'm not even gonna talk too much about it, but I have a couple tubes of it. A lot of people love the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows, and the Tom Ford Brow Gel, and the Hourglass Brow Gels. Love me some tinted brow gel because you can see how it just kind of softens my brows. For mascara, I'm using the Care Vice mascara, which is lovely. This is, in terms of like all natural organic mascaras, this is the only one that I have found so far that does not transfer. This is like, it's like Glossier Lash Slick, but with more volume. And what's cool is that with this product, you can buy refills for it. Now for the lip, we're going to do a red lip, which is a fall staple. I am toying with the idea of doing something like 30 days of red lipstick in October and where I just wear, and it's like a personal challenge for me too to kind of help me go through my red lipsticks in my makeup collection and kind of tone things down and figure out what I really love and I'm gonna keep. I don't have 30 red lipsticks, uh, but I thought that maybe for October, every single day that I'm wearing makeup, I will just wear a different red lip and kind of see how I like the formula, how it performs throughout the day, and maybe do a little roundup of it either on my blog or maybe I'll do a little quick summary video if you're interested. Let me know. Do, do you love red lipstick? Would you watch something like that? Um, maybe I should, or maybe I should just do it for like my blog or Instagram or something. This is by Terry Click Stick in the color number 18. The color name is Be Mine, and what I love about these is the shape of it. It has such a cool angled applicator. You click it, it goes up. Formula doesn't bleed. It's not too drying. It's like a it's a matte formula, but it's like a velvety matte. The only thing that I don't love about this is the um, the scent. It has a very very strong rose scent. It is quite intense. Sometimes it, it feels like, and it doesn't really go away throughout the day. Sometimes it feels like I'm literally just bitten into a bouquet. But this formula is so beautiful, it just glides on. All right, and this is the finished look. Not sure what this was, but um, I actually really, really like it. I love the way it turned out. Let me know what makeup looks you tend to gravitate towards in the fall. I hope you're having a lovely day. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye.